Hi guys, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be covering a blueprint for an elevator system. We're going to do this in two ways. The first is going to be a simple overlap so that if your character is standing on the elevator it's going to rise and if the character is not on the elevator then it's going to go down. And the second is going to be a key press so that if you press a key the elevator will rise and if you press another key the elevator will fall. So let's begin. We're going to right click make a blueprint class and this is going to be an actor. We're going to call this elevator underscore one underscore bp. We're going to open this up and then before we edit anything I'm just going to drag this into the world so that I can see it. I'm going to add a component static mesh and I'm going to call this lift underscore mesh. And I'm just going to select the one meter cube. Apologies if you can hear the alarms outside. Emergency services sure do choose their times to go by the house. I joke. They do a good job. I appreciate what they do. Now I'm just going to scale the elevator to a size that I like for our character and that will do. So I'm going to quickly compile that. Now I'm going to add another component. This is going to be a box collision and this is going to be our trigger. I'm going to drag this onto the lift mesh which will parent it so you'll notice we have now this little hierarchy tab here anything underneath this is owned by the lift mesh you can see that the trigger is owned by the, the mesh so if we were to move the mesh the trigger goes with it as you can see there okay so what we do need to do really quick is just move the trigger box around and then scale it up so that we have a nicer area for our character to actually use the lift in that's quite nice. I'm going to compile that and then I'm going to go into the event graph. I'm going to delete all this because we don't need it. Now we're going to select our trigger box and if we scroll down in the right hand side under details you can see we have our different events here and we need a begin overlap and we also need a end overlap. Now you can also get these by right clicking the trigger on the left and adding an event like there. So from other actor on the begin overlap we're going to cast to and this is where you need to find your your player character I'm using third person character and we're going to do exactly the same for the other there we are so what this is doing is it's making sure that only our third person character is actually able to trigger these because we're going to use the success pin rather than the fail pin so what we're going to do is we're going to add a timeline and this is going to have a float track if you double click the timeline you can come in to edit this we're going to add a float track and we're going to change this time I want this to go for about three seconds now right click add a key and then at time zero we want the value to be zero and then we're going to add another key and at time three which is the end oopsie daisy time three at, we want the value to be one now the reason we're doing this is because we're going to be using a lerp. So we're going to quickly plug the second cast of the character into the reverse so that if the character leaves then it reverses the timeline. Now we're going to drag from the new track that we created and we're going to lerp vector. So what this value here is doing is it's lerping and a lerp takes any value so we're going to go be going from the lowest value of 0 to the highest value of 1 and with 0 being off and 1 being on we're going to start at A for 0 and end at B for 1 so as the timeline progresses and our number goes from 0 to 1 which you can see here you can see this this theoretically is our A point and this here is our B point but we're going to quickly promote both of these to a variable and I'm going to call the first our start point and we're going to call our second end point. Now I am going to expose the end point. I don't need to expose the start point and the reason I'm going to expose the endpoint is so that I can actually change this in editor if I need to. So I'm going to set this to go 200 high by default. So we're going to set the endpoint Z to 200. You can get these values to show up by compiling. 
because beforehand these will just be blank. You won't be able to compile them because uh, you won't be able to change them because it hasn't been compiled yet. Now we're going to drag from the update from the timeline and we are going to um, set relative location and we're going to do this for the mesh. Now the reason that we're moving the mesh is because the trigger will be taken with it. We're going to take the return value, oops this is location and rotation, that's not what we want. Set relative location, we just want location. Set relative location for the lift mesh, we can delete that one. We're going to plug the alert vectors result into new location. We're going to compile that. And now if we press play, if our character steps onto this, it should rise. And if we leave it, it should fall. And it does. Now, the reason that I had the endpoint exposed, if I drag another one out here and place it next to it, is because now over here in the details panel, we actually have endpoint revealed to us in default. So I can set this one to say a thousand. If I press play, if I stand on this one, it's going to go a lot higher than the previous. But the first one will still go to the same height as before. That's because they're using an exposed variable that we can change in the editor. So I'm going to quickly delete the second one because I don't need it there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and just duplicate this blueprint. I'm going to name this to elevator2 underscore bp. And now we have pretty much everything that we already need here um, to, to do what we need to do. So let's just drag the timeline away and we're actually going to break the links to play in reverse. And I'm going to get a Q key. And then I'm going to get a keyboard E key. I'm going to say if we press E, then we want the elevator to go up. And if we press Q, we want the elevator to go down. Now, if I compile this and I drag one out, place it here. If I step on this now, it won't go. If I press E, nothing happens. Okay, and neither will Q. Now, the reason that this doesn't do anything is because by default, a blueprint isn't actually looking for any sort of input. Even though we've put one in there, the blueprint can't receive these. The, re the reason that it can't is because otherwise every single blueprint would, by default, be able to find our inputs or, or would be looking for inputs and that will eventually get r quite expensive for your games because every single blueprint will be going, should I be listening for a key press? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag from our uh, cast to the third person character and we're going to enable input. And then we are going to drag off from the overlap end and say disable input. Now, if we're away, we can't press anything to go on them, to make them go up, but if we're on top, still nothing happens. Because it doesn't know what input it's looking for. So we need to get player controller. And we're going to plug that into the player controller rather than the target, I do believe. So if we go in here now, there we are. Now pressing E allows us to go up, and pressing Q allows us to go down. And the same as before, we can say change the Z, so let's make this 2000, let's make this guy fly. So we'll get on him, wee hee, okay. But now we can actually control this in midair if we wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, which isn't really what we want to do. Well, you might you might want a, a lift that you can change the direction of. So let's make a third version. <clears throat> we'll duplicate this, and we're going to call this Elevator Three. Oops, Elevator Three. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a branch. So we're going to move this along, and we are going to say drag from the E branch and drag from the Q and branch. Now, we're going to add a variable. This is going to be a boolean. Um, we're going to say can control. 
so it can control and we get get that and plug this into the branch condition for both so can control yes it can control um, so let's compile and we're going to set can control to be defaulted to true so add a tick a tick means that the boolean is true so if it can control and you press E then it's going to play if you can control if you Q it's going to reverse but we need to make these turn off so what we're going to do is we ooh, I've got too much grabbed there you get back there we're actually going to set these here to be like so so we're going to turn that off right before it animates and then if it's finished set can control back to true and I'm going to drag this one out I'm going to head over to that one and now I can't make it go back down until it ends and I can't make it go back up until it's back on the floor And same as before, if we wish, we can ramp this up. That's right, I typed in 10k. Here we go. Whoosh! Well, oh, goodbye world. So there you have it. We've got two different types of lift. Now, you can expand this further. So say you wanted to have multiple floors. Multiple floor system would require multiple start points and multiple different places to trigger. So you would essentially have another blueprint that decides which elevator start location you're at, and it will update the start location based on where the elevator is currently, um, which floor it's currently on, and then you can actually call the the elevator to it. Now I might cover that in a future video, um, but this is just a basic um, setup for. A little bit of lifts and dynamic um, gameplay elements for in, in your projects. Um, it's not high on the priority list right now to do an extended version of this. This is just what we're going to be using as a basic introduction to, to moving objects using blueprints. So I hope that's been useful for you guys. Um, you got three different types of lift now and you know you can customize how quickly it rises Wee or rather how high it goes if you wanted these to be quicker so let's say i wanted this blueprint to actually take less time we can take this point here and we can move this to say one second in and we'll just shorten this because the end of the timeline is going to be based on when we can turn it back on or off again and now you can see this goes a lot faster woohoo bump <laughs> it's kind of daunting doink but there you go um three different styles of lifts um i hope that's useful for you guys i hope that's something you can use and i shall see you next time